On the surface, Singapore seems like it offers hope. In the early 1960s, it was poorer than Mexico. 25 years later, it was three times as rich. Today, the average Singaporean earns more than the average person in virtually every other country. They do better than people in Germany and Japan. Singapore has done extremely well. Its government has made savvy decisions, and its achievements demand respect. However, it's not a great model for other countries to follow. Singapore has a set of advantages that most places don't. Plus, there's an uglier underside to the shining success story, which we'll return to at the end. Singapore is an island, a very small one. It's about half the size of London or Los Angeles. However, it has two natural advantages that make it one of the most strategic pieces of real estate on the planet. The first is its harbor. A great harbor needs to be sheltered from the ocean and deep enough for large boats to pull right up to the shore. Nature gave Singapore both, and when the empire-building British found it, they knew they'd just struck geographical gold. Singapore's second big, the natural advantage is its location. If you want to trade between East Asia and India, Africa, Europe, or the Middle East, you pretty much have to travel through the Strait of Malacca, which runs right past Singapore. That has been an asset for Singapore for centuries, especially after global trade expanded with the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, which linked the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea, and then exploded after the Second World War. So, telling Peru or Malay they should copy Singapore is pointless. Singapore is a little like one of those freakishly gifted athletes at school who could do everything well because of natural gifting. Some other kids, some other countries, just can't compete. However, just as people with natural gifts still have to develop them, so is Singapore. There were several early attempts to exploit the island's advantages, but it would be the British who succeeded after they arrived in 1819. Britain was the world's leading economic power, and they saw the island's strategic value. Over several decades, they turned Singapore into a major trading port. Every year, hundreds of ships passed through the harbor. Tin, rubber, and petroleum were the primary cargo. By 1900, Singapore was a large, modern city. By the time it won its independence from Britain in 1959, it had become a formidable player in the region, providing not only a good location for trade but key connections with producers, financial services, and firms to process and market the commodities. As Singapore grew, it gained one further edge. When the British arrived, the island had almost no inhabitants. They needed people to develop their new colony, so they encouraged people to immigrate. The great majority came from China, and many of them were ambitious types wanting to make a go of it in an increasingly dynamic commercial center. Most countries have to deal with a less educated, less skilled rural population, which can act as a break on growth, not Singapore. So, when Singapore began life as an independent state in 1959, it had a host of advantages. Its new leaders made the most of them. To begin with, they decided that their island could make things as well as ship them. Singapore soon became a leader in the production of electronics. Foreign companies did most of the manufacturing, but Singapore provided. The fact that the Chinese migrants had learned English made international deals even easier. Next, Singapore became a global financial center. Again, Many of the key players were foreign. American banks had opened dozens of branches in Singapore. However, highly educated Singaporeans filled key positions in each one. Finance made Singapore richer still. This was a different route to prosperity from the one followed by other Asian success stories, such as Japan and South Korea, which relied less on foreigners in finance and built major corporations of their own, such as Toyota, Sony, and Samsung. So, a prime location, a population of immigrants, the English language, a great education system, and good relationships with foreigners. Singapore had a very good hand and played it with great skill. Most other countries have less to work with. Holding up Singapore as an example for others is hardly fair. But there's an additional explanation for Singapore's success, which other countries could follow but hopefully won't. Singapore is an authoritarian country. There are restrictions on free speech. Workers aren't free to protest. Fewer than 20 opposition politicians have been elected since 1965. Lee Kuan Yew, who led Singapore from 1959 to 1990, said Asian values were better than the disruptive individualism of the West. Singapore had economic freedom, but political freedom, not so much.
If you learned something through this video, we highly recommend you watch our other videos. Thank you.